So facial animation is just an extension of body animation for me. So clear and specific, what does that mean? It means that you want to be able to show the emotion, thought, and intention of acting very clearly to the audience so that it makes sense. If, you're, if your facial expressions, if your emotions aren't coming through and obvious to the audience, then they're not going to understand what the character's thinking, which is the whole point of what your shot is about. Well-designed means that it's appealing, it's exaggerated, it's dynamic. Um, it, it would be most likely staged to camera, especially if since we're focusing on feature animation, you're gonna you're gonna adjust your design so that it fits perfectly for your camera angle. And then supports the body animation. That means that it should continue the line of action and it amplifies your pantomime or your body expression rather than just sitting on top of the body and doing something different or separately. Your body animation is the more important thing at this for this shot for your shots in this class the body will establish the idea and the face just clarifies it so think about it as you're you're building your performance on a foundation of good pantomime good body acting and you're just amplifying it you're adding the details with the face you're you're clarifying the idea if your animation doesn't work with pantomime, the face isn't gonna fix it. It's gonna look like a character's just standing there and then their face is moving around all over the place. You really have to consider how the poses work all together. That gives the most visual impact to the audience. Um, the face and the body work together anyhow. In reality, they work together, so this isn't, this isn't even like just, just an animation principle. Your body acting will sell the shot and your face will just help the audience even more. I want you guys to remember is that you all came from class four, which was body acting, right? So this just builds on top of it, and then class six builds on top of this. So you don't forget what you learned. It's just emphasizing it more and more. Getting really good at the basics makes you really good at the detailed parts later on. We want to make sure that it's very visible, very focused. We want to make it really easy for the audience to understand the expressions just from the brow. And then the mouth, the, everything else around it is just going to amplify that. So we design the big broad gestures first. Then we design the big facial expressions that we're going to work into. Say the person's curious or dumbfounded and they're talking like this. Most of the time you're going to be looking right here with little tiny glances here. And you see the gestalt of the animation through that. For practical tips that will help your animation immediately, you want to make sure that you're staging to the camera, right? So if you're looking over here and you're doing all this animation, but you only see the back of the head, you're just wasting your time, right? So you're first presenting the face to the audience and you're telling them to look right here, look at the face, it's adding on top of your body animation. But to not interfere with that even more, here's a couple of really big tips to help make sure that you have the right staging to show all your expression in your shot to the best advantage. So control your head angles. If you're smiling, right, hey, I'm smiling, and you can smile and you can lift your head up and it kind of opens up the face, but if you smile and you lift your head down, the brows naturally are pointing down and it looks like an evil smile. So if you're frowning and you're looking up, that changes the expression then when you're frowning and looking down. So here is the brows naturally are going to follow the, the axis of the head. Here's a nose. Let's do this. He's looking up and smiling. Evil smile, right? Now let's do the opposite way. Even looking up, this one's going to look like a more relaxed or arrogant smile. Uh, let's say let's say the character is doing surprised. It's not just going to be like the brows are up and then you just leave everything else neutral. Boring. That's not surprised at all. So if the character, if your character is surprised, you're going to have one brow higher. This is going to be your stretch side and this is going to be your squash side. The eyes are wide open. Maybe his mouth is, is dropped down really low on his face more of a, a shock or a disgust with the surprise. So you have 
the mouth wide open. Here's your squash side on this side. See the lines are, are opening up, pushing the cheek up here, opening up that one. If your character is is really angry, you want to really push the face in. Their their nostrils are flared. They're maybe they're growling at someone. Work through your main expressions that you've already you've already analyzed and see how far you can how clear, specific, and simple you can push your poses. That's actually just a drawing of me, isn't it? <laughs> Martin asks, when you start blocking the face, do you use the same concept as using the minimum number of controls as possible? Yes, I do. Because the face is complicated, you don't want to start right away and like do a ton of work on um, like the tweaker controls or the individual controls that line the eyelid you want to just use the fewest controls possible like the lid moving up and down in and out the brows moving up and down in and out I really want to make one drawing one illustration of that expression of that thought and do the whole thing 